Welcome to the Salt Circle Podcast. My name is Hank. With me today is Ben. Oh, you, you sound like ben, you're we almost did an episode about coronavirus. Yeah? COVID-19, but I'm just too fucking exhausted <laughs> to do that topic now. Why? It's so lighthearted and fluffy. You took, you took too long. Yeah. I mean, oh, see, I took too long because I, I don't know why. Like, I'm, I'm on my normal shower schedule, which I think is reasonable, unless I've been, like, extremely sweaty or working out or something. Like, it, just every other day, you know, as, as needed otherwise. And my hair was so greasy that, like, the shampoo could not, could not penetrate. It wouldn't, like, lather up properly, so I had to shampoo twice. And then, because... I was I was hurrying. I even skipped using my organically sourced conditioner in the shape of a cheese block. So you're welcome. I mean, you could shower again after this. I'm not going to stop you. Yeah, but I already showered once. All the showers. <laughs> oh, but what if you showered again? What if I just showered all day? But then on. coronavirus can't get you. <laughs> You're safe. <laughs> you just turn the water on hot enough to kill it. That's like boiling, though. <laughs> There's also your you also kill your skin and yourself. Then you're the safest. Yeah, I'll be protected forever. I'll be a nice soup. Yeah, getting uh, <laughs> disco Elysium flashbacks. Are you, is there cannibalism in that game? Is um, there is a part where you. I, I think I told. I think I told you about it. Maybe not. Um, there is a part where you're trying to get this armor, and like you can choose to make your character be like, I really fucking want this armor, but the problem is it's still attached to a dead guy, and it's at the point mm -hmm. where like his rotting corpse is kind of fused with the inside of this armor, and so my mm -hmm. character was like, Yo. What if we just put it in some boiling water, like softened it up, and it worked? Oh. It worked perfectly. Jeez. Like I, I just slipped the armor off of his legs that I ripped off of the corpse, and afterwards, my character is like, "Look at that pot of stuff!" Now, I like dipped my finger in and had a little taste. I see. Yeah. So you engaged in cannibalism by choice. No. The character <laughs> led me there. <laughs> you were role playing. I when I I don't role play, sir. I roll life. It's not me anymore. I am the character. I have no control over my actions. I don't like where this that... is going. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagining like one too many like D and D players who like try to fuck every character in sight. I'm like, I don't like how this is going. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's like when I played too much Grand Theft Auto and then I just wanted to steal cars. Yeah. Or like you go to a goat cart track and you're like bumping people a little and then you get on the highway and you're like, what if? What if I had a shell to just fucking throw at someone? <laughs> <laughs> what if I took this banana peel? Yeah, what if I what if I threw this threw banana peel? Threw it on the raceway. <laughs> <laughs> so what are uh, I would show him. What are we what are we talking about? Um, I guess we're talking about music in video games. Such a weird way for like? that topic to come up. Like, that's an actual topic. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. Like, it's... Maybe it's better this way. Um, I mean, when you say music in video games, what's the what's the first thing that comes to mind for you? Well, the reason I bring it up is because I was thinking of my particular favorite single tracks in video games recently. Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. is the thing I was thinking about. Okay. 
Uh, mostly because of the Final Fantasy remake that's coming out. Sure. Because Final Fantasy VII has probably my favorite single track Ooh. in any video game. What's that? What, which track? Uh, Cosmo Canyon. I'm deaf. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played. I don't Final know Fantasy if you played Final Fantasy VII. Oh, so I don't know how to reference it. It's like so. It's like a part in like probably around the middle of the game where you get to a town that's kind of it's kind of a respite. It's like one of the few places you go where there. I don't think there's any fighting there. And you learn a bunch of backstory about, like, what's really going on. And it's, like, the point of the game where all the characters kind of, um, like, take another... You have the chance to, like, think about the mission you're on to save the world. And, like, if they actually want to do it. And they kind of, like, all recommit. So it's, like, you're not just, like, now you're not just, like going forward because of your of the circumstance where you happen to be together which is how like sometimes where your your party comes together that way yeah um you're kind of all all committed to this what you're doing and like uh, the and the song itself is like this it's like relaxing but it's got like a good drum beat I don't know, it's hard to describe like a, a song without you know just playing it I mean I'll I'll yeah. check it out. Is it? Uh, is it more? What's the best? Is, <laughs> so it's maybe. Is it more like a, a Zelda song? I guess where it's like. I don't know how the how the fuck to describe it. There's like Zelda songs, right? That are like extremely catchy, but and and mm-hmm. like there then there's stuff like, I don't know, maybe something like. The Halo like, or like generic it's more generic like it's a, it's good but it's like a background thing like nobody's going to be uh, not nobody I don't know you know what I mean like the closest thing the th- so one of the big things it's like there's a somberness to it okay. and like the closest thing with a Zelda track I can point to it out of my head is like the the version of the Zelda theme that plays in like the intro to Wind Waker okay okay but like it has it it's higher tempo than that but yeah um, but it's like a it's it 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 captures that feeling of like sadness but determination really well to me i i but also I, it's just like does it get a place i it also just reminds me of like a place i just lo- really like being um <laughs> like a home i i figured out the way to describe it does it get stuck in your head is it one of those songs I mean, yes. Okay, sure. I mean, like... There are plenty of bad songs that do that, too, though. So. Well, yeah, but, like, the that sort of, like... I don't know. Like, there are some songs that nobody's, like, just thinking of them all the time. Like, maybe the, like, yeah. I mean, again, Halo it's music is a strong isn't... drum beat. Yeah, so yeah. So it's, like, has that, that bass that... Yeah. pretty simple. And it's, like, probably the... Of all the songs that it's, like, easily the simplest... Hmm. Um, because generally I much prefer songs with vocal tracks. This is like the one without a vocal track that probably means the most to me. Hmm. My, uh, there are only two Final Fantasy tracks that I know, well not know, but like, (laughs) have listened to in the game. Mm -hmm. And one of those I think is pretty, is like, Hello, popular, and that's to Xanarkand, Final Fantasy X. Mm-hmm. Like, that's... I don't even remember that song. No? Okay. It's but I, I haven't really deep. played Ten. I, like, don't remember anything about Ten except that song. I didn't finish it. Yeah. Um, and then the, the intro theme to Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, like, blew my fucking mind as a kid. <laughs> hmm. A little, that little, uh, like the intro video. Just, I wasn't, ex- like, mm-hmm. I was so used to, like, Mario and shit that I just wasn't expecting something like that on the GameCube. And I turned on, I'm gotcha. like, whoa, what the fuck? This is unbelievable. 
Ben's child mind is blown. Yeah, man. And I mean, I was like, whatever, 10 or whatever when I heard <laughs> that Final Fantasy VII stuff. That was pretty mind-blowing to me at the time. Pretty different from other games I had played, where like suddenly RPGs opened up because I had Final Fantasy VII and Pokemon. Nice. It's like, wow, what a great genre <laughs> that I never played before. Um, I mean, where do you... Where do you stand on Zelda music? Um, it, I mean, Zelda music is good. I'm not like... I get... Part of it is just I don't love the 3D Zelda games. Yeah, yeah. And so... Yeah, I suppose... Uh, it doesn't those, mean as much to me. Again, like, I really like that in the song in the intro to Wind Waker. Like, mm. I just love that that intro, that idea. A lot of the stuff with me and Zelda is like, I like their ideas in them. And them I like, yeah. Like if you push me, my favorite Zelda thing, I'm probably like, I might say link between worlds. Like his link between worlds. I really do like that game, but I also just might do like the fucking Zelda comic. That's a Nintendo <laughs> power. Cause that thing's dope. <laughs> it has an eyeball monster. It's all eyeballs. Um, it turns into a werewolf. There's a like a cool moon. It's it not like the Majora's Mask moon. It's oh, like does weird. it have a face? Yeah. Oh shit! But it's like it's like dark, just dark spots, and it's like melting slightly. Oh god. Okay. It's dope. <laughs> I mean, like Zelda music is, uh, I guess, is what I think of when I think of like good video game music just because mm -hmm. like i think i think all of it is objectively good I, i'm trying to think if there's like a track i actually don't like and the reason that if, there, if there's one i don't like it's probably because it's like at a creepy part in the game um i mean like there are times <laughs> i don't want to hear like day three majora's mask themes yeah it's yeah like... yeah <laughs> i don't i don't need that tension in my life right now yeah dude Thanks. Thanks though. Thanks though. Same and, reason like like uh like Mario like less than a hundred seconds left music is not something I'm gonna go. Yeah, yeah. Seek out. Um, whatever. See, and that's why. Uh, uh, digressing briefly, that's why the Skyrim soundtrack on disc is real good because it cuts up. It, it like se separates the ambient stuff from like the oh shit you're in a battle now music, which mm -hmm. <laughs> is. A godsend, but yeah, I don't like Zelda music. Is hard because it's really good, but sometimes it's it's hard for me to listen to like in a sitting. Right, like I'm not just I don't want to bump from like Lost Woods to something from Wind Waker to like the main theme. It doesn't always it doesn't always mesh well, I, I guess, but. One thing that did like confirm just how uh, how good I think that music is, I was playing the uh, the uh, Link's Awakening remake, and just like out in the overworld, you know, they're bumping that main theme, and Anya was like in the room, like just doing stuff, and she's like, "Did this win any awards?" And I'm like, "What do you, what do you mean?" She's like, "The music, like, did it win awards?" I'm like, I, "I don't think so. Why?" She's like, "It's really good." I'm like, okay. I mean, yeah, hell yeah. Finally, some some taste. Do you win any awards? Well, she'd never heard it before. Yeah. She's not a capital G gamer. It's old. Old music. Yeah. And then, I mean, Breath of the Wild, like... I mean, I'm sure there's people out there that think it's the best Zelda music, but it, I think for the most part, it just it, it's good, but it has that like background quality to it. Like, I don't remember any specific track from Breath of the Wild unless it's referencing an earlier Zelda song. Oh, yeah, I know so much but, of that game. Like, there just isn't music, kind of. Yeah, it's extreme. Like. It's like Minecraft, right? That's the We're thing. gonna play three piano yeah, notes yeah. and let it. <laughs> like with a lot of these, like 
the well, my favorite ones, like when I was really trying to zero in on my absolute favorites, mm-hmm. like the connection with the game and how it made me feel as part of playing the game was pretty important. To, yeah. Like, for like the ones that stand out for me. Cause like there are plenty of songs that it's just like, Oh, that's just a banger. But mm-hmm. that doesn't, it didn't make it to the tippy top for me. Cause at some level that's still f- something I can forget. That's like, there's an ephemeral quality, something that's just really good rather than something that's like feels important to me mm-hmm. personally or whatever. Yeah. And because like, I don't know. I'm just, the story in Zelda is like, <laughs> it's like intellectually interesting to me more often than it is like actually a thing I'm engaging with. Sure. Yeah. Like I like Majora's Mask and Wind Waker have like story elements that I think it's super cool. Like uh, the, I'm always down for a groundhog day of reliving the same day over and over again to, do it right or whatever and yeah. like the apocalyptic thing and i like i like how wind waker is a post apocalypse that's like happy <laughs> like yeah, yeah. Are, it's just like cheerful it's like one of the things i like about adventure time the post apocalypse where it just you know yeah people are having fun yeah. they're living their lives it, the world ended but you know it's silly life goes on yeah <laughs> whatever and still be harrowing. Mm. It's fine. You can do both things. Rather to just like all the time the grim dark apocalypse. Yeah. You know, it has a pla it's place too. It's just a little overdone. Ooh. Um I think maybe one of the I'm trying to think like what my single like greatest track is. I it might just actually be like the Halo 3 main menu theme. <laughs> like someone uh before before the Master Chief collection was announced for Steam, um someone had someone had put like a little I guess a video of just the Halo 3 main menu. Just like the little animations going on in the background and the music. And that shit hit like it hit <laughs> pretty hard because I just played so much of that game and that was like my my first like online experience really like playing that mm-hmm. game with people and then you know you randomly add some guys and you start playing and shit and it turns into a whole thing like it was just a really good time and I mean the, like the story in the campaign were also fantastic but like that that theme mm-hmm. is just ingrained in me. It's crazy. I don't think I would recognize it if you put it in front of me. No, you'd recognize it. I don't think I would. It's just the it's the choral piece. Ba, 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 ba. No? Yeah, but I never played that much Halo. Okay. And okay. when I did play like I was playing multiplayer at a friend's place. I wasn't Hmm. It's like I was intaking it differently. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Like, the most I ever... Like, I played through a... I think in Halo 2, I played, like, until... You play as, um... Arbiter. The fucking Arbiter for the (laughs) first time. Okay. I think, like, that's the most Halo campaign I ever played. (laughs) Gotcha. Because I was like liking it, and then I was playing these the Arbiter. I was like, I don't like how this plays anymore. I just don't like how this controls. <laughs> yeah, I think that's I actually like also shooting right. the things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it probably won't come as oh, a sh- but, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So th- one other thing on um, Zelda, real quick yeah. though, is I definitely have had a thing of like with Zelda music of like, oh, there. Who was that one track? There's just like in my brain. There's like this really good Zelda track that I want to listen to, and I don't think it existed. <laughs> I think I, my brain was like combining elements of different Zelda tracks to create the the perfect Zelda track in my brain. Oh man, it was like 
Yeah, it was like taken from the like the Song of Time. It's like the and like combining with Zelda's me- melody, but it was not a song Weird. that existed that I could find. <laughs> Again, I feel like that because that's part of like a lot of my experience with 3D Zelda is like watching my friends play it. <laughs> yeah, like so it's like secondhand mm-hmm. experience of those games. So I had a secondhand memory. <laughs> it was like that's wild. Only half formed. <laughs> <laughs> Just slap them together. Yeah. Um. It won't come as a shock to you, but uh, Horizon yep. Zero Dawn, real, real good shit. Um, that main that also did, that that music does not stick with me again because it's that kind of music just doesn't stick with me generally. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. It is definitely more like it's not it's not as catchy. I think. Um, yeah. But. Uh, yeah, the main like the main like, theme that like if I were, is... like I couldn't tell you a fucking thing about it, I don't remember it all. Like the the either I wouldn't be able to recognize it or it would like flood back with other with memories because that could happen, could trigger something if I were listening to it again. Oh yeah, I'd be like, oh right, that's the Horizon songs, but um, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's definitely more in like the, I I guess the. <laughs> Like background listening, like I'm not gonna remember this exact thing. Like even mm. for me, like a good chunk of that soundtrack, I remember the feelings more than I remember exact melodies, and it's like much more broken up. But yeah, the, you know that game affected me a tiny bit, just a little. So really, yeah, yeah. I mean the the soundtracks because it. Again, like, not even in my top four, top five of soundtracks from that year, really. Mm. There were a bunch of soundtracks that year I loved. Like, the Nier Automata one, I fucking love. It's probably pretty good. And the thing... <laughs> and one of the things that I really like about that game is, like, there's, like, different versions of all the songs based on stuff with the playthrough and okay. or just other things. That's so cool. There are the, the, all these alternate versions. Also, it has a, like, a hilarious vo- vocal track. It's just a joke song that I really yeah. like. Because it's just funny. Uh, so it has a little bit of... And it has that, that like, you know, village where you, you, your people are that you just like. It has a good song for that. Yeah, and all that kind of stuff, and it had, you know, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just a good game. I like, like the Power soundtrack, like all the fucking, all the Super Giant game soundtracks by, uh, dude. It that I think those are my most frequently <laughs> listened to soundtracks. Um, yeah, I'm I, the only, the only video game soundtrack I physically own is the one for Bastion. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> The physical CD for that one. I think I grabbed... I mean, not, not in Russia, of course, but I think I have Bastion and Transistor. Like, on disc. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bastion was, Core. like... Fucking again, Bastion was, the, Bastion was the game that made me, like, look at video games as a whole, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Like... Because it was good enough as a whole for me. Like, it just connected with me. Like, this art style is fucking dope. Like, the visuals of this game are aesthetically pleasing. And I think... Not that I was of the... Because, like, some some kids are just, like, hyper-focused on... Like, I want the game to look realistic. Oh, this game looks better than this one. And, like, that's the only metric for visuals. Um, and I guess mm. some people, I'm sure, but, uh, I just had never thought about, like, a game that's visually pleasing without being, like, real, like, like, having a distinct style. Um, and then Bastion came mm. along, and it's like, okay, well, this is amazing. And then the soundtrack, like, I remember 
there's like the the point when you get to the swamp and you're like the, the kid passes out and just like the combination of the narration and the soundtrack in the background and they're doing like this sort of distortion thing like as you're passing out unreal unreal blew my mind more so than the crystal chronicles thing this one actually blew my mind like it was it was just so good and all of that like the end song it it was crazy and i like i yeah. bought it immediately i'm like this is unbelievable yeah i really like that like despite the fact that, that game has just the narrator talks but then you get those songs for those yeah. characters that like says tells you everything you need to know about who those people are it's, it's really so good, good dude yeah that uh and then i mean transistor is crazy because like it's also an amazing soundtrack but it's a completely different style like it's so good and it it doesn't it's not at all the same yeah i haven't listened to the full transistor soundtrack just because i'm still like one day i'm gonna fucking play that game but it's that vocal the like title track that they put out like before the game came out mm -hmm. it's so incredibly my thing yeah dude <laughs> it's like the till all or one thing is is just a thing for me i love that idea and things that play with that idea and fight against that idea and like i just love that song like yeah. i lo probably like that that might be my favorite uh <laughs> song by him and it's from the game i didn't play oh yeah so, See, this is why I don't feel bad completely about not having played Pyre. You can play, you can, when you start going through Transistor, I'll start up Pyre. Mm -hmm. Fully. And I haven't, I'm like, I like the Hades soundtrack, but I'm just like waiting for all of it to exist. Yeah. Because that, that... Like a, that bugs the shit out of me when you're like I have the mm. soundtrack and then they release more and then it's all fucked up in your library mm. can't deal with it payday payday was terrible for that <laughs> a, like 18 new tracks every 8 months or whatever it was a Hell nightmare yeah. an absolute nightmare <laughs> um yeah and the pirate soundtrack is also banging yeah, good. the I, I've been so tempted to listen to it, but I don't want to do it without having played the game. Like I can't, I can't yeah, no. bring myself to. Yeah. Um, no, I think, think all of all of Darren Corb's just... stuff is like top fucking tier. Um, yeah. I do want to. You know who else is top fucking tier? Yeah, Danny B. Danny B is real good. <laughs> Uh, Super Meat Boy and Curse of the Necrodancer, very good. Fucking very good. That, uh... Man, I hate that they changed out the Super Meat Boy soundtrack Dude, on later and, releases. And the Isaac soundtrack. Uh, the original soundtrack is so much better. And they just chat on it. Yeah. I don't... I, I hate it. I know there are people that prefer the... Rebirth soundtrack, but I'm just not like they're wrong. <laughs> I mean, the argument I've heard is it fits better with what that game is, yeah. but... but it's not as bumping. <laughs> That's it's not the... as bumping. It's a problem, though. It fits the themes of uh, religion and blah blah blah. Yeah, but does it bump? <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> Like, maybe some, but, like, that was the other thing, was, like, the Anti-Burst soundtrack was also real good. And then they're not bringing yeah. it in, of course. Mm. Mm. I mean, all I'm gonna do, I'm sure someone will make a mod to replace the ant the the Repentance with the original Anti-Burst music, and then you get that, and you get the mod to put in the original Isaac music, and you're golden. That's true, you can just mod that game so i'm still not as Fix easily it. but yeah that's fair um so i i feel the need to mention the persona 4 soundtrack 
So when you were talking about Halo, it's just like I played so much of this game. It's like yeah, Persona. I I love that soundtrack. Some of it is just you spend so much time with Dude, that game. That's what I was gonna. You're say. just like <laughs> what I like. Uh, yeah. yeah, like with Persona Five. Honestly, like the song that ended up sticking the most with me is like the fucking chill. Like you're just doing your day, <laughs> your yeah. normal day music. Because I'm just like it's so ingrained in me, and like this is why I I love this game. It's just like because it's like I I just lived here for like a few days. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was uh the the yeah the daily whatever music in Persona Four Golden. Like yeah, me after I'd finished the game, like me and. Me and Peter were talking about the the music and stuff, and he like linked one of the songs. Maybe he linked like that one and another one, and I'm like, Peter, I just spent like a hundred and twenty hours straight listening to this song. Please, <laughs> like, I, I don't want to do more of it right now. I need like a six year break. And even now, yeah. like when I hear some of that, I'm like, oh, I can't do it yet. It's been I don't need to listen to it because it's just there. But it's and good. Some of it just also, even even like without having played a lot of it, some of it was infectious. Because like before I even sat down and played the whole thing, I'd only like seen parts of it. I think like the Velvet Room music from Four was already burned into my brain, and I like found myself like fucking humming it. Hell yeah! Not even like what was that? Oh right, Persona Four. I remember. And if you, like, asked me, I wouldn't say, oh, yeah, I love that. But it was, like, definitely, like, wormed its way into my skull. Yeah. Until I loved it. And it does have, like, yeah. a... Like, I don't know. It, all that soundtrack has a very distinct vibe to it. Like, you hear it. And also, like, Reach Out to the Truth remixes very well with the Space Jam theme. <laughs> like <that one. laughs> Fuck yeah! But like that mashup. I mean, that's a that's a hell of a mashup, though. <laughs> it's really good. Um, that YouTube channel that just meshes up the Space Jam theme with any fucking song. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> um, but I mean, also for Soda Four, it's like I played that whole fucking rhythm game. <laughs> Oh, it's yeah, all night, yeah. and I love that game. So, yeah, it's all. I certainly, certainly love that soundtrack. Mm -hmm. it, although one of my favorite musical moments in it comes from like the fucking end boss, the way the music like swells in that climactic mm. song, and it's like a it's a long song. It's like. But like most of it's slow, and then like eventually it like builds into reach out to the truth, but yeah. like not even fully it, but like trying to get there. And it's like yeah, it feels good. <laughs> it's just a great little moment. Yeah. Uh, also, Golden has it fixed a thing. Okay. That wasn't in the original. Where in the video game dungeon, in Golden, the boss track is 8-bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's incredibly good. That was a great moment. <laughs> it's like, it wasn't it was like the that most important change. No, it was Fuck. just the regular thing. Yeah. That was like the most important change to Golden. That was, a, was, that was a bang and fight. I was so happy that like, I was I do, a little frustrated, but look. Oh. So good. If they remade that game again, they wouldn't do it. But really what they should do is when that boss goes through its different forms, it should switch back and forth Ooh. between the regular version of the song and the 8-bit version. That'd, be, that that'd be tasty. That's the way it should... That, ideally, that's the way it should work. I would get that game on, on like PS4. I, that, if they re-release that game... And like do stuff to it, I would 
and I would it would be an excuse for me to play it again because it's you I know think, I want to, but I it's think, fucking I, long. I think if they just even if they just re-release Golden like as is, I I would I think I would get it. Like I want like I just don't have a means to to play it right now. Um, if it were just Golden without any changes, I wouldn't. That's totally fair. Be- because that would still be not getting the extra content out of that game that I haven't played, which yeah. you can only do like there because there's the boss fight you can only do if you do a new game plus. Oh, I haven't done that, even though I've played that game twice because I played it on PS2 and then Vita. Yeah, yeah. So I would want to do that, and I would probably try to platinum the game. Oh, if I were gonna play it again. Dude, I was looking at going for Platinum and Horizon Zero Dawn, and then that PC announcement came. And it's... Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I will. Um, see, the thing with Persona, I think that would be a, uh, that'd be like the perfect game for Anya to watch some of. Like, I feel like she would mm-hmm. get into at least watching the, like, the, the story relationship shit. Maybe not I mean, me failing. First boss two hours battle, playing and watching. Oh, not really it was game. a rough hump. <laughs> it was a rough hump to to get over that, and I was like, I was tired. I was exhausted by the end of that early shit, and then it finally yeah. picks up, and then just. No, no, I did that first part, then didn't uh, like play that game for oh. months. Be- but also partially because I, I was only playing it because I had watched that yeah, part already, yeah, yeah. and my friend started playing it. Oh. I was doing that again. I was just like a little burned out by the end of that. Yeah. And then when I came back to it, I was I was all in. But yeah, that definitely happened. Also, I can't justify playing Persona Four again. I have to play Persona Three. <laughs> like, just that has to happen first. I started it, and I just never, I just never got there. So my problem is I have to play the PSP version because that's the only version that lets you control your party. Yeah, yeah. Because I tried playing the PS2 version and not being able to control your party just drove me fucking insane. I mm-hmm. just can't deal. Oh, yeah. I am not. I do not have the com- the composition. It's also why I hate Yokai Watch. It's Yokai Watch or Yokai just fucking do shit. Just fucking, Classic. It's like Pokemon if you couldn't tell your Pokemon what to do. Even though that story is hilarious. Honestly, Yokai Watch, fucking content gold. I love the story, the writing and the story. It's great. Mm. Uh, gameplay, though. Yeah. Problem. Problem for me. It might not, and it might have been fine, except it also got hard. Those mm. two things, or it like got too hard for where I, I lost a fight. Like, I lost a big fight, and I'm like... No. Is that <laughs> deal breaker? Done. Done. Wow. So. Wow. Um. So we mentioned it briefly. I do wanna mm-hmm. I do wanna give some props to the Payday 2 soundtrack. Yeah. Um I do I, I have listened to that one a, a fair bit, like outside of the game. I, I did it. I think I went through it probably like twice fully, if not more, over the course of us playing Heroes of the Storm. You know, when mm-hmm. Enya got a little stale. Um, and one of the things I love that it's it's hard to get outside of the game, of course, but I love that uh, the tracks like have a quiet portion, like the stealth portion, and then like the loud when it transitions mm-hmm. like all those all those uh build-ups are so fucking good in the game it's like it's building yeah. up it's building up and then shit pops and it's 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 so good it's so good it's very good in the moment for sure yeah that one's that one's quite good i never really i wouldn't again i don't listen to that stuff outside the game but in the game very good yeah and when they added, like, being able to choose your menu tracks and stuff, very nice. Mm-hmm. Could have tasty, tasty tunes 24 hours a day while playing in the game. <laughs> I 
I'm trying to think like I, I I'm kind of interested of like the flip side of this. Are there any are there any game soundtracks that just fell completely flat? Like even if it was a good game where the music just like Tembo the Badass Elephant. You had It has that... like a disco themed level, a disco themed boss fight, and the music kinda of sucks, and I'm like, God. You guys fucked up. What? If this music had been good in like like and like tied into this, this would have been great. What game was it? it said, Tembo? Tembo the Badass Elephant, made by Game Freak, the makers of Pokemon. I don't know about Tembo the Badass Elephant. When it's... the fuck did it come out? 2015? Yeah. I thought mm -hmm. this was... You said it, and I thought it was, like, some obscure, like, Super Nintendo game. Like, that's oh. what came to my mind immediately. Huh. Wow, I like, mean, nobody Game gave Freak a... didn't start making, like, non-Pokemon games till like, Harmo Knight. On the... 3DS? DS? DS, mm. maybe. Which is, like, a rhythm game. And, and even that has Pokemon tie-in stuff. Gotcha. Cause it, so they can do Pokemon songs in their rhythm uh, game. Ah, yeah. As you do. Speaking of Pokemon... Yeah, actually, I was going to say. <laughs> so, with Pokemon for me, it's really, the, like, the nostalgia for Gen 1 and, like, the Gen 1 versions of, like, the battle themes... Particularly, like, the fucking gym fights and, and the, your rival battle at the end. Yeah. And the way that shit just makes the Game Boy chip fucking <laughs> go all out. I fucking love it. Yeah. I love that shit. Um, I'm trying to think, like, what's... It's like a wall of sound from the, from the Game Boy. Yeah. I, I think from a nostalgia standpoint, like, maybe Gen 3... All those horns, dude. Mm -hmm. Fucking brass me up. I'm ready. Um, but I think, like... Cause, yeah, that's... So, the, the thing is, like, if I compare um, original Gen 1 to, like, Fire Red mm -hmm. soundtrack of those same songs, they just don't hit... Like, the better versions don't hit me as hard. Yeah. It's like the... Because they're not, like, as balls out as the Game Boy ones have to be. Yeah. To live. <laughs> <laughs> to, like, come alive on that sh shitty-ass speaker. <laughs> I, that's under your hand. I think, is it is it Gen 4? I think it's Gen 4 that has, like, the... Uh... The most, re for me, like, I'll listen to some of those outside of the game a bit more. Um, just because they had, I think, it, I think Gen 4 was the, the first, the first one to have some tracks that weren't just, like, going balls to the wall. <laughs> like, they had some laid back tunes, or more mm -hmm. of them anyway. Especially, uh, especially some of those forest tracks. You know, you know how I like it. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember any of the other music beyond Gen 1. And I've probably played more Gen 3 than I played Gen 1. And yeah. I only remember any of the songs from Gen 1. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just how it goes. But that's... I mean, I've had my Game Boy on mute most of the time when I was playing those anyway. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Got to uh, hide while you're playing in bed. I've been there. I just don't want to be. I don't know. My I didn't want to be rude to people. I don't want to impose yeah, yeah, yeah. the will of me playing a video game on other people. It's my thing. Mm -hmm. I can uh, there's actually just within myself. One um, one thing with uh, Heart Gold Soul Silver. That eight bit music mm -hmm. though. Being able to change back to the original soundtrack. Ooh. I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah. You get like a it's like a key item or whatever. Or something or maybe mm. something for the radio. Something like that. 
Yeah, you can switch Soul back Silver, to the original. I remember the fucking so little about it, and I know, and I played through that whole thing, but for whatever reason, that experience didn't stick with me. Yeah. That well, except I guess I don't remember because ah, uh, eh. I don't remember if like the bonus silence stuff I'm remembering is even from that one. <laughs> I think it is, or if it's from like. Fire Red, I'm thinking about stuff from. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Weird. I think, like... Yeah. It's partly because I skipped Gen 2 the first time around. Oh, yeah. It's probably part of it. See, I... I really want... I, I, I want to, um... To get a Gen 3 release on 3DS, and then somehow... Make it so I can put my Pokemon from Gen 1 up to Gen 2 and then up to Gen 3 instead of having it be, like, separated like it is in real life. Okay, you but, want a thing that's never going to happen. <laughs> yeah, you know. Casually. But. Yeah. yeah. I don't want flat I, out. Some people. N- Nintendo said they didn't like how GBA emulation ended up working. Yeah. On those consoles, and they're just not putting anything out on 3DS anymore. That's a dead or on level. or on a Switch also would be acceptable. Yeah. Something, anything, yeah. please. Fucking uh, GBA <laughs> online's part of the surface. Just GBA games. It'd be good. It'd be something. It'd be better than getting like NES games. Nobody gives a shit about. Oh man, original Super Mario Bros. Finally, a way to play this that isn't the Wii DS, 3DS, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, emulator, phone. No, they already had a version of Super Mario Brothers on the Switch. It was just, it was the arcade version of Super Mario Brothers, (sighs) which is like half Super Mario Brothers, half lost levels because they need to make it harder in the back half. And also, it cost like eight dollars because it was one of those arcade ports. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I bought it and liked it, but I don't really recommend it. Well, everyone should play the arcade Super Mario Brothers. It's good. It's weird because mm. it turns into a different game halfway through. And you're like, wait, this isn't Mario Brothers anymore. What? What's going on? They tricked me. Um, I got it. Like all the, I'm I'm thinking about like other Nintendo IPs. Uh, mm-hmm. what do you think about the Mario soundtrack? I'm like, well, let's let's stick to like more the older Mario soundtracks. Like, what do, what do you, where do you um, stand? I like the I like the intense boss music stuff. Like, I really like the airship music. Okay. In three. Yeah, and yeah. Imposing. And I like... Because that's the, the only stuff that sticks with me is when it's like heightening my emotions along with the stakes getting raised. And I will say, like, on the flip side of like, oh, soundtrack you don't love as much. Like, I like the Super Mario World soundtrack, but one of my problems with that game is that in World 8, it's still like using music from world one on levels <laughs> it's and not it's not that. intense enough it's like it, yeah the world as a whole is not it doesn't bump it up enough whereas like three you're in fucking hell in <laughs> world eight yeah you're in hell world and it's just not a, like bowser's like disco party world is like okay <laughs> but like this happy level where I'm riding dolphins is not exactly what I'm looking for in World Eight. I don't yeah, know. yeah. I mean, I guess like Mario music generally doesn't do too much for me, but like, like tr- I guess more like old school Mario music. But yeah. fuck, if the main theme doesn't occasionally just get in my head, like I'm at home, I'm doing my own thing, I'm just chilling, and then like. Bup, 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 like it's just there suddenly for no reason, which you know is sometimes a nightmare, <laughs> but is catchy. Yeah. And what about uh, most the best? 
The most important Mario soundtrack is Super Mario Land 3 Wario Land. Which is also <laughs> like the fartiest video game soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> that That's like a soundtrack that's just never intense. It's just like doot, doot, dirt. I guess it's intense a little bit sometimes. That one always says, I just, I don't know, I love that game so much. That's just <laughs> one where I just love that game. Yeah, yeah. So I'm down for whatever it's given me. Um, very floppy. I don't know. It's pretty good. How do you how do you feel about like? I also uh, actually Mario. probably my favorite Mario song in a Mario game. Okay, is from the Game Boy version of Donkey Kong. That's like the second to last. It's not like the technically the very last song on the final boss fight. It's like part of phase one, I think. Mm-hmm. And it's it's super intense. It's just like <laughs> super intense music. And does that Game Boy thing of like just going all out on that hardware. Yeah. That is just something I'm, I have nostalgia for and is buried deep into things a thing I love. It does it well. Mm-hmm. I mean, the... it's like Final Battle question mark. I think is is how you find it <laughs> if you look for it. The, uh, I mean, the best Mario song is just people creating covers on YouTube of Toad singing songs, and he's just screaming. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Please no. It's all he can do, man. It's how he communicates. Um, this is how he wins. What do you what do you think about like newer newer Mario game soundtracks like Odyssey or I guess like 3D World or Land or anything? Yeah, they're fine. I don't know. I don't really. Th- I don't think about them. Is what I think. <laughs> what did you like, think about? They're fine in the moments. Again, p- p- how I feel about them in the moments is going to determine how we feel about the game. Yeah. So, um, like. Yeah, How I don't you... like. I don't really care about the uh, the oddest. I don't care about the, uh, the galaxy soundtrack because I don't like those games. How did you feel about Super Smash Brothers getting lyrics to the theme song to the main theme? I don't think I even listened to that. No, I'm bothered. Okay. No. The English version what gives I me breath do of the wild vibes. that Super Smash Brothers did is they did they like re-recorded a song for one of the characters from a WarioWare game. Yeah. And like completely redid it with like orchestra and did Japanese and English versions of it. And it's it was like in Brawl, but I never heard it in Brawl. It wasn't until I think like Smash Four, where they like surfaced it way better. Mm. Fucking Ashley's theme. I mean, it was like a whole new song, and then I'm like, wait, this was in the older games. It just was like one of those random songs that could come up on low chance on the WarioWare levels. Yeah. Instead of like they, it was like had a much actually, higher chance. Of, yeah. Yeah. Dude, the Ashley. the Smash Ultimate soundtrack is actually phenomenal for what it, it's doing like all the remixes I mean, it's and covers crazy. and shit and the yeah. fact that like what uh what what was it um like the street fighter soundtrack or something i forget which which uh like series it was that came into the into the game for the first time but they like asked oh, the, probably the the snk stuff with terry oh, coming in yeah were they were yeah 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 that one um Street Fighter, whatever he's King of Fighters or whatever King Fighter Fighters. Fighter King Kid Super Fight. I don't know. Um, but when they asked, the, like, oh, what, like, what, what, what sound, what tracks can we use? And the dudes like all of them. <laughs> so there, there's like a hundred <laughs> tracks. It's just ridiculous. There's so just many to choose from. In that it, game. It, there's, there is like I went through and adjusted for like some of the levels. Like, oh, what 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 songs do I want to come up? And it's a fucking chore. You could do it for like six hours. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I mean, my favorite is still probably uh, 
why did I just had the name in my head and I blanked on it? Um, from Melee, Fountain of Dreams, the that's remix a, of that's Gourmet abs- Race. It's an absurdly good one. Cause I already love Gourmet Race, and then mm-hmm. they just fucking made it amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a very that's, that's a so very good, and that level's so pretty. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that level is great. Still a good one. Yeah. Um. Uh, another soundtrack I have to talk about. Okay. Is the world ends with you? Yeah. Cause. Like, part of the plot of that game is the main character is always wearing headphones. And that soundtrack was so good that even as a handheld game, it made me... Like, as someone who plays on mute most of the time with their handhelds, I made me start wearing headphones to listen to the music while I was playing the game. Hell like yeah. It, physic- it changed my behavior. <laughs> and, like, the end of that game is, like, <laughs> the character takes his headphones off. It's like, oh my god. It was so good. Nice. At the time, it like it it did the thing. I uh, that one's really good. I never played it. I just I don't know. I think I was at that point where I just like it was a smelly RPG that wasn't Pokemon. So miss me it's with that. It's not shit. an RPG. It's like cut. well, it was it's like touch controls. So it was like you level everything up. But it was anime. It is, and RPG. young me knew that yes. anime meant RPG, and I'm not about that life. Something I don't know. You know I just never got literally through. every video game. <laughs> I'm not a weeb. It is pretty anime, but like I mean, I'd always heard good things. I think I it's. I did it's one of my favorite games. I did try it. It was my once. favorite game till I played Persona 4. Gotcha. Like when I played it, it was my favorite game I had ever played. At I least, like counting as single player games as a different thing from multiplayer. Yeah, maybe yeah. like you pushed me on say Warcraft 3 or whatever. Mm-hmm. Dota. Um I did actually try it, but I had I got like a, I had a flash cart for a while. I had a shitload of ROMs mm-hmm. on it, and I'm just like, I'm t- I, that is not a, a feasible way for me to take in games, because yeah. suddenly I have like 80 games, and I have no attachment to any of them, because it was just a few mouse clicks. So I played it, mm-hmm. I played all of those games for like two minutes, and then moved on to a different one. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely terrible. And it's a weird but- one to like... Go tell people to go back to because, like, stylus controls are not like a th- thing anymore, really. Yeah, and it goes so hard into it, and it's like asking a lot of you because you're it's asking you to stylus control on one hand, and then with the other hand, you're like d pad controlling the other screen. Yeah, yeah, it's like really involved, and none of that is gonna c- carries over into any of the ports. Like, that game is on Switch, but it doesn't capture that gameplay thing. I mean, is it worth playing on so Switch, then, instead? Weird. Well, I don't... Like, again, you're losing part of the experience, so I don't even know. Okay. I want to pl- try that version and see how I feel about it. I just haven't gotten around to it. Yeah, yeah. Um. Like, because there was, like, an iPad version well before that that did this... Weird. That, just stripped it out and like kind of like it just has half the game playing itself for you because it can't because you can't do both two things at once yeah so i don't know Hmm. well one of the other things just about that game like that game had like completely customizable difficulty where you could scale the enemies and your level as much as you wanted oh okay you would like you get better rewards based on how much you were doing it nice That was cool. But yeah, good good soundtrack. I just um, I, I was curious, so I checked. Mm-hmm. You can you can use a Joy Con in addition to the touch screen. For switch. Hmm. Okay. But I wonder, again, that's yeah, if the, they, the, the the thing I would warn about 
Like, that was a game you needed a screen protector. Yeah, yeah. you would fuck up your... You would actually fuck up your <laughs> DS just playing that game normally. It, Hell yeah. Like, that's a, that's a... When you're done playing this game, you probably want to replace your screen protector because you probably fucked it up. Amazing. It's like... It's, it's intense what it's asking for you to do with that thing. It's a lot. A lot of, a lot of scribbling. Gotcha. Uh... Other game I have to shout out mm-hmm. before, before we get out of here. A couple more. Azurus Wrath. <laughs> the title theme, and there's a version of the title theme with lyrics. In your belief. Okay. That one just gets me. Hmm. And that's, again, partly because like, I love that game. And I love how that game makes me feel. Like, Azurus Wrath, in a lot of ways... It's it's just garb. It's like just bad because it's QTEs and it's combat that's not very deep. But the way it puts it all together, and it like does QTEs better than every other fucking game, because mm-hmm. it's like actually they like thought about how it, it was implemented instead of instead of like how Bayonetta does it. Like I I pl- Bayonetta is like a much deeper combat system. But its QTEs like feel like garbage to me when I play it compared to Azor's Wrath, which is like a game that probably feels more like garbage, or whatever. <laughs> but whatever, it emotionally gets me. Yeah, it hits yeah. me in the gut, and like I like the and I like the anime story is fun for me, and I like I like the story, and it's emotionally it gets to me. The story mm-hmm. about angry dad wanting to punch God in the face because his daughter cried. It's like it's like the core of it. <laughs> Got to punch God in the face. Uh, it's, it's simple, but it's effective. So like it's melancholy, like main theme really, really gets to me. Yeah. Uh, and then there's Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core on the PSP. <laughs> also has some good tracks. And as a, that's. That's the game I'm where at my affection for it feels like I'm just such a homer for Final Fantasy seven. It's like the game's not great in terms of how it plays, but I'm I was so all in on it because I liked how it did its story and how it portrayed its heroic main character. It was just like hands on hips heroic. Which was it's pretty fucking rare in video games, honestly. Particularly yeah. in the world after Final Fantasy VII, so like our heroes are all fucking conflicted or morally gray or whatever. Yeah, or emo or you know, whatever you know, complicated. And Zack in Crisis Core is just like. All I really know how to do is hit things, and I want to do good. <laughs> and sometimes he doesn't know what the good thing to do is, and he makes mistakes, but, you know, his heart's in the right place. And he gets shot a bunch. <laughs> you know? And, that, that like, that good. game just has a great thing of, like, the end is getting to this particular tragic moment where everything's going to go wrong, and this, everyone's going to die. Yeah. Um... And I like how it gets there. And I like the music that goes along with it. Mm-hmm. Got some good melancholy stuff. And on the other end, like, Shovel Knight soundtrack is fucking great. And they because they, like, made, fo- like, a bunch of other camp, three other campaigns, they, like, redid all the songs every time they did that, too. I... And it's fucking great. I have owned Shovel Knight for years. I think I played like five minutes of it. It's very good. I I've it, never like three of the campaigns are very good. I think one honestly, of them's garbage. I, Plague Knight is garbage because they didn't redo the levels. For, gotcha. Uh, him. I might like it could have been fine. But I might just didn't do actually it. check it out. See, I I obviously I've seen like all the shit they've been releasing. I was under the impression mm. that I would have to buy all of it, but apparently, like, I just have it, I guess. 
Yep, if you bought it. I mean, if you bought the game back then, yes. I think I or do. If you bought the Treasure Trove pack. I think I have. It says I Treasure think, Trove. I think it's Treasure it's Trove. That's how it should be renamed. Yeah, it's pretty. I'm pretty sure it's Treasure Trove. So, yeah, I, yeah. for so I'm like, I, well, I want to play the game, but I don't want to pay like another two hundred dollars to play the game. But since I have it, nope. yeah. Um, and to get like those other campaigns are prequels. Yeah, they're just like here. Play as this other character in mm-hmm. a d- different game that's similar. Yeah, and some similar enemies, but they all play pretty different. Yeah. Um, do you have any more you want to shout out quick? Um, I mean, I'll I'll throw out to the moon. Had a very good soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Um, that game also just like I I listen to tracks from that now and again, very rarely. I've never I don't go through like the full thing or anything. Um, that game that game hit some of the some of the notes of that game hit particularly hard, like just lined up with my life at the time a little bit. So mm-hmm. it was like a it was a lot of emotions playing through that game. Um, yeah, there was there was another one. What the hell was I gonna say? Must. <laughs> Must have not been that good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it'll come to me uh, after. As far as done. like older game series that we've left out, like Castlevania and Mega Man stand out in my head. Okay, it's having fucking bangers. Yeah. Um. I'm sure there's plenty of other good video game music. As it, is... as it turns out, yeah. No, I mean yeah. like we we talked about a lot of the a lot of the big ones, a lot of the good ones. Um oh, there uh the Hellblade. That was a that soundtrack was like perfect for that game. Um you have like all the dark like kind of Norse Celtic shit going on. And then at the end, it's like this bump and fuck, like almost a pop song. And it's just like Mm -hmm. inspiring as fuck. And it's so good. And then the credit song is like, I I forget what it, what the name of the song is, but it's like just this dude singing. It's, it's so good. It's such a perfect little thing. (laughs) It's very good. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably... I think uh, that's an episode. Yeah. That actually went that went Got surprisingly to, uh, quickly. Just talk about stuff I liked. Yeah. Listen to you talk about stuff you liked. Yeah. Fine it's nice. Time. As opposed of, to the uncut gems one. <laughs> or instead of talking about the living nightmare that is our lives. Yeah. In the Corvid world. Yeah. It's Corvid-19's world. I mean, we're just living in it. It's been some good advertising, though. I have been until buying... COVID twenty. <laughs> <laughs> I've been buying more Corona beers. People keep saying Corona. I'm like, fuck. I have limes at home. I could go for a Corona. I used to, apparently, you're in the minority. Apparently, well, because people are fucking are stupid. People are fucking idiots and think it causes coronavirus. Yeah. I mean. Whatever, I'll support them. People are terrible. It's actually wash your hands. Nice. They've been every single. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Yeah, yeah. Don't I touch also, your face, dude. I'm okay. I'm terrible at not touching my face. I did get hand sanitizer to like alleviate it a little bit. If I can't wash my hands, did you get a hand sanitizer with enough alcohol in it that it actually does yes. anything? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Um. Because you know what's not actually as good as hand sanitizer? Washing your hands. Yeah, yeah. Washing your hands with soap. Soap's still better. I've been... See, I had started... I mean, I, I, I washed my hands, of course. But I kicked it up since moving to Russia just because, like, there's a shitload more people. And, like, I'm touching a railing on the metro. Like, how many tens of thousands of people touched that railing already that day? Um, 
or mm-hmm. even like that month. I don't know when the fuck they clean them, if they clean them. Um, mm-hmm. So like every time I get home, I'm washing my hands. If I get like to a restaurant or something, like we wash our hands and all that shit. And that was, I wasn't as concerned about being that thorough in Wisconsin because oftentimes I wasn't touching as much shit. <laughs> Especially stuff mm-hmm. like I would touch my car, but like nobody else is touching my car, so it didn't seem as bad. You don't know what people are doing with your car when you're not around. Putting their dick inside the little door handle <laughs> crevice. It's They're really... just licking everything. Ugh, cursed. Um, <laughs> but I realized I was talking, um, and I, like. One of my coworkers didn't really realize this, and Anya had never really realized it. I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to, like, I need some hand sanitizer. And Anya's like, well, can't you just wait and, like, wash your hands? I'm like, no, no, no. You're a woman in Russia. I'm a dude in Russia. In Russia, dudes, when they see other dudes, you shake hands with everybody. Every time I walk into my class, all the guys, like, come and shake my hand. The girls never do, and nobody (laughs) shakes women's hands. So, like... That sounds like a health hazard. It's going to lead to problems. I mean, like... No one should shake hands ever. No one should touch dude, each it's, other. I, it's, yeah. I'm not a fan. I mean, I've been doing it, but now I'm like, ooh. Should we, like, switch to, like, elbow bumps for, a like, a month at least? Maybe, like, a fist bump at least. Something. Yeah, fist bump I'm fine with. Keep I... I started doing that one at, uh, like, whenever I'd play Magic the Gathering. I can't mm. deal with that much sweat on someone else's. Uh, so I'm at any, <laughs> if you're at any kind of convention oh. or, or large group setting, don't touch people. I mean, if you're at a convention and worried about getting sick, you're not that worried about getting sick. If you're at a convention sick. and you're not worried about getting sick, you're probably doing it wrong. Yeah. Because there's just so many people. I would know. Like, it's too much. It's way too much. I was Wash nervous enough at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Just constantly. You're bored? Give your I hands mean. a wash. <laughs> kill, <laughs> kill a couple minutes. Just, if you want to touch your face or you want to eat. Dude, I want to touch my face I realize constantly. That's, so I, I hate it. I couldn't figure out why they were recommending don't. They were like saying don't get face masks. It's like, how could it hurt? And I realize the reason they're telling you that is because if you have a face mask, then you have a thing on your face that you might want to touch. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> is actually the reason it would be bad. Because the touching of the face is the number one. And also because, like, if you're not sealing it properly, it's actually not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it will give you false sense of security. I mean, if it makes you feel better... I guess. But the touching your face thing is like, absolutely. That's it. Again, problem. and your people are buying them out and preventing people who actually... Dude, them, it's I ridiculous. Yeah, Even the little, like, there was a bit of a uh, markup on the hand sanitizer that we found. Mm. And, like, one store we went to just didn't have any, but I think... I think they yeah, didn't. there just isn't hand sanitizer around here. I think they it's didn't have any just so because they had a, like, it's not like they were stocking, stock, stocking, Jesus Christ, stocking uh, tons of it to begin with. So then, like, it didn't take much for them to run out. Look, we ran out of toilet paper here. I'm fucking oh, people shit. Are wild. Dude, I, I'm so glad that, like, there's, there's some conspiracy that people are covering shit up in Russia. Like... But at least it's not causing a panic, so like, you don't have to worry about getting toilet paper. So far, I should say. Um, I did see a, a tweet that made me, it hit me in my heart, and it was like, imagine just running out of toilet paper normally, and you weren't aware that there was like, no toilet paper <laughs> left. Like, and that's that tweet a, I said? Was it you? Was it, it was you? Me. I saw it. You, super, yeah, you liked it. I saw it. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, so I came up with that tweet. Banger. Fucking banger, <laughs> bud. Yeah, no, that was a good one. And That's I kept I kept my own banger. personal salt for the triggered channel. 
where I complained about not being able to buy food. <laughs> I did see that briefly. Yeah, the the pasta. <laughs> I just wanted rice, man. <laughs> rice is all gone. <laughs> Ridiculous. Ugh. All pasta right. I could get, but it's like not the brand of pasta I want. Oh yeah. All right, let's. Dude, start. you gotta be. I people might people might like like smirk at that, but like fuck, I've had some bad pasta, dude. Times is just that goes. Yeah. Anyway, before this turns anyway. into a Corona uh, cast, email us saltcirclepodcast at gmail dot com. Find us at Salt Circle Pod on Twitter, or Salt Circle Podcast, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Overcast, Spotify, wherever good podcasts are found. Um, I'm on Twitter at Comic Panels. I'm on Twitter at Bean underscore LP. Yeah. See, it was all about finding something I was energetic to talk about, and then I could talk a little bit about coronavirus. Like it was, <laughs> it was just I needed to be restored. Yeah, need my life force returned to me. Also, I managed to mute myself when I had to cough during this podcast. <laughs> nice, right on. Because <laughs> I definitely had a couple coughing fits, but I but I muted my mic. <laughs> I did not notice at all. I have a cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'm mean, you sound over a cold. You I'm sound on, much on better than side. last time we talked. You sound that was like rough. That was like probably the worst I'd felt. That was just like as I was sitting there, I was getting it was getting worse. Yeah, I think the next day, like I just slept. I was wondering why the fuck <laughs> you're like, playing work, sleep, work. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right.